face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better. And joining me today is actually a guest host, which is actually called Token Minorities, who is an excellent pocket tuber. It's going to be linked down below. He's going to join me for the analysis, of course, about the meta itself and how they are doing. And of course, his conclusion of which one is better between these two. I myself am going to take a bit of a rough rundown between these two and what changes as the generation went on. As a few guys may or may not know, these two, due to of course sharing the Dark Fire type, had quite a tough journey to do, simply because Fairy Type was introduced in the generation, making these two not useless but definitely tougher to use, due to both of them being actually quite, well, slow is the right word to use. Which seems to be a caliber of the fairy type in two, but not being able to outspeed the majority of them, have keeping these two away from the relevant meta. Now things happen of course as Auras was introduced, but I'm not really gonna go into that in more detail. I'm actually gonna leave token minorities or jolt for the rough rundown. So basically guys, enjoy. What's going on guys? This is Jolt here from the Token Minorities, and I am here to, I guess, give my two cents on this comparison between Pangoro and Scrafty for Generation 6. But before I go further on that, I do want to throw up the red flag and state that uh, lower tiers are not exactly my specialty, and for those of you who do follow my channel, follow my battles, you do know this. Uh, but I do feel like I know the two Pokemon well enough to give at least a decent analysis of them, especially in terms of their base stats, what moves they have available to them, and in general their impact on the metagame throughout the uh, entirety of Generation 6. So uh, just go ahead and jumping into this. So both of these Pokemon do share the Dark Fighting typing, which offensively is really, really scary, especially in Generation 6 with the buff of Dark Offense. But before, uh, before Generation Generation 6, obviously, was Generation 5, and Pangora was not around, but Scrafty was. So I do want to talk a little bit about Scrafty's role in Generation 5 first, before we jump into how it fit into Generation 6. So Scrafty had excellent defensive typing in Generation 6, with its only weaknesses being, I believe, to flying and fighting? Maybe bug. I think bug as well. So three weaknesses. If I'm wrong, feel free to yell at me in the comments. I really don't care. But the point is, Scrafty had good defensive typing. And if you look at its base stats, it had base 115 defense, base 115 spadef, with an option to boost at least the defense and bulk up as well as well as its offenses. So Scrafty was fantastic on bulky offense builds as a setup sweeper, as it's very hard, especially in UU, I believe is where it was for the majority of Generation 5. It was just a very big threat to prepare for because fairies didn't exist. But if you turn to Generation 6, the introduction of fairies definitely uh, hinders Scrafty quite a bit in terms of being a bulky setup sweeper because in its rightful tiers, which varied, I believe, from UU to RU throughout the generation, uh, there are a lot of fairy types, and those fairy types are able to switch in pretty darn easily against Scrafty, essentially denying free setup as Scrafty is forced to attack instead of burn a turn going for those uh, boosty moves like Dragon Dance or Bulk Up because the fairies are able to come in, essentially be immune to the possibility of being O-Code, and then KO with any fairy move because of the four times weakness. So Scrafty really was neutered in Generation 6, despite the fact that Knockoff got that incredible buff in being able to hit for more damage as well as having the higher base power uh, than it did in Generation 5. Now with that said, bring in Pangoro. Pangoro, a new Pokemon, the awesome panda. Everyone wanted to play with the panda as soon as it came out because a panda Pokemon. Oh my gosh, I have to use this. Base 124 attack. That hits 381 attack at level 100 if adamant max EVs. So that hits very, very hard. Comparing that to Scrafty, base 90 attack hitting only 306 at level 100 without really the option of easily setting up a Dragon Dance or Bulk Up. For that reason, I have to give Pangoro the edge in terms of being the most viable. So with that said, I'll go to take over a little bit from Jolt here and just talk a little bit about the evolution between these two because one has to really have the consideration that Scrafty was to be the better between the two actually from the get-go of an X and Y. Uh, main reason was because, well, Pangoro's move pool was really, really lacklustering. Its best stat was of course Crunch, it didn't get access to the likes of Knockoff, and its best fighting attack was actually Stormthrow in case you didn't want to utilize the likes of Hammer Arm. 
So Pangoro actually was to be considered NU for quite some time and probably gonna keep falling due to actually sharing that speed tier which is really bad of 58 and outside of that actually having pretty much close to no bulk in consideration with Scrafty, Pangoro definitely stood taller being definitely the worst between the two and was actually quite hard to use. I remember most people using uh, Scarf set with Stormfro Pawning Shot having it as a quick hitter which, as you guys can probably guess too, wasn't really that effective, since it didn't outspeed the likes of actually 100 base Pokemon. Uh, so its main move pool here was just not really on par. It wasn't until Generation, or I guess you should say Aura, as to be completely honest, where things started to change, and definitely for the better, getting access to the likes of Fire Punch, um, Thunder Punch, and of course Ice Punch, together with Drain Punch, Super Power, Iron Head, Gunk Shot, Teferi Killer, Outrage, Zen Headbutt, the list just keeps growing. It probably has the broadest move tutor moves of any Pokemon ever. Definitely close to useless on its own, but with the right move, it definitely becomes slightly better. And of course, it gets knockoff, which made all kinds of different. Because of as Joel Taylor was mentioning, there is a difference in this generation between what a fi fighting dog type could do in generation five in contrast to what it can do today. With fairy typings in mind, and definitely fairy typings faster than these two, one has to take consideration that they were wanted KO'd easily by fairies, and not being able to set up such as Crafter, of course, lacking only having the likes of Poison Jab and Iron Head, Andrew Pangoro, who now could throw a gunk shot on a switch in, and pretty much echoing co it because of, of course, the, the one main reason its attack is just that broad. It's so high, it's able to KO those fragile fairies, so Pangoro went from being somewhat of, I guess I should say, a bit of a whittled down Pokemon from of course the majority of X and Y to actually become somewhat great, and uh, I'm gonna let of course Joel fill in the gaps here. Up. For that reason, I have to give Pangoro the edge in terms of being the most viable Pokemon for Generation 6, because it's so hard for Pokemon of this dual typing of Dark Fighting to get off a boosting move of any kind. I know that sometimes it's possible, and when you can set up a couple Dragon Dances with Scrafty, it might just be GG, because Scrafty is so naturally bulky, it can take really any priority hit very well. Mach Punches, Vacuum Waves, it will laugh at them because it's so naturally bulky. But it's just really hard to get up those boosts whenever fairies are literally on every single team you'll see on the ladder. At least every single competent team you'll see on the ladder. So, uh, you know, I do think Pangoro is the stronger mon of the two this generation. And I feel that's really evidenced by the fact that currently Pangoro is banned from RU. It's in BL2 and Scrafty is currently in RU. So Pangoro is a half tier above Scrafty in essence uh, at the end of the generation. So I do believe Pangoro was the stronger Pokemon, despite the fact that they have the exact same base speed in 58, the exact same typing in Dark Fighting. Uh, I just do have to give Pangoro the edge because of its power, as it's able to hit very, very hard while Scrafty needs a turn of setup before it really hits that hard. That said, both are still solid options for your lower tier teams. In UU, I think I still would give the edge to Pangoro uh, at the end of the generation just because it's able to hit hard and a lot of things in UU are pretty fat. Uh, and that said, there's almost always a fairy type on a team in UU as well, as Sylveon is there right now, and Sylveon's on literally every team because it's amazing in the tiers. So, uh, Pangoro, definitely the mon of choice in that situation. But that's about all I have to say on this. Both mons really have a fantastic move pool as well, but who needs a fantastic move pool when you can spam knockoff in Generation 6, am I right? So, uh, let's go ahead and kick it back on over to Skyranter, and he can tell me how wrong I am. And yeah, how wrong are you really? Damn it, Jolt, if one takes into consideration what you said, one would believe that Pangoro would be the superior mon. Well, if you look at two dealers' abilities, you will find out that there are a distinct disadvantage for at least Pangoro at this point. Iron Fist and Scrappy is definitely isn't helping it out. Moldbreaker might not just be the only option for it to be somewhat viable, of course, with kicking, of course, that quake for the Levitators. Outside of that, look at Scrafty. Intimidate, Moxie, Shedskin. While it might not be able to, of course, set up against the proper matchups, it still have the options to survive the matchup that can't superior it or even outmaneuver it. So Scrafty has overall the options to do what Pangoro simply cannot, and that is, of course, set up, and set up well. And there is also where the faults fall, and why I'm actually gonna say that Jolt is sadly right, actually. 
Pangoro is to be expected to be the superior mod between these two. People were really frustrated when Orath was coming out and uh, Pangoro got this extended moveset that Scrafty was stealing UU, it should have dropped from the get-go because Scrafty was never a setup sweeper in UU. One really has to take this into consideration. It was a flawed Pokemon and it still kind of are due to the, the bad speed here and of course, sadly I should say, the lack of power that Pangoro actually brought. While I would say that Scrafty is overall the better outmaneuvering Pokemon and can do a plethora of more things, Pangoro just do one thing and one thing really good and being a dark fighting type actually require you to only do this well and that is punch hole in the team. And it being able to threaten out the things that can one it KO it with gunk shot, yeah one really has to take consideration that Pangoro just might be the better overall Pokemon. But it did take some time though, I will give you the guys that and say that Pangoro have struggled to get where it is today, but where it is is where it belongs and that is definitely UU. It's a BL2 mon, but trust me, it is viable, it's a reason it left RU and Scraft is still are there lingering, as you all said. So while it does break my heart to give Pangoro the winning point here, one really has to take consideration, and like I said here, Pangoro simply do what Scraft you cannot, and in a tier where you're forced out by default, you really have to punch hole in the things that matters. So Pangoro, you're the man. So with that said guys, thank you of course so much for watching. I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you guys check out of course Jolt or Token Minorities on his channel, which of course is linked down below. He is a superb Wi-Fi battler, has a plethora of league battles, and this is definitely one of the guys that I'll definitely looking forward to seeing Generation 7 due to what he brings to the meta or just Pokemon content overall. Definitely one of the good ones, so definitely check this guy out. And with that said, of course, if you guys want to see anything else or want to share your own thoughts on which one is really better between these two, make sure to write it down below. And who do you want to see, of course, in the next episode. With that said, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.